Hey y'all, today's project is these pom-pom trim shorts that I'm wearing. You can make these as pajamas or you can make these to wear out, whichever you'd like. I'm going to show you how to create this overlapping leg and how to do the pom-pom trim to finish off the raw edges. I have a couple of pattern options for this. One is a free one size pattern in my size. And then I also have a multi-sized pattern that can be modified to get this look. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's get sewing. So these are the pieces to my Barton shorts pattern. And this comes in sizes extra, extra small up to 3X. And what I've done so far is I've marked the side seams on them. So then what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna have to flip one piece over match up those seam allowances as far down as they'll match and then go ahead and tape that together. Now of course this pattern piece is a scale model so you can see what I'm doing. You do the same thing on a full scale pattern piece. Once you have that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to create two pattern pieces. So the first one we want to create is the back of the shorts and this is the part that's going to overlap. So what I'll do is trace the existing pattern and then I want to go onto the front leg about midway and same thing with the bottom here okay and then I'm gonna create a new curve and I want to start at about the same point but I'm going to create a curve that goes all the way up to here. So at that point, I would be removing my pattern. And then you can freehand this curve, or you can use something like a French curve. And let me show you that. This is a French curve here. And you can use it to make the curve if you like the way it's curving up and you feel that that is a pleasing curve. You could definitely do that. I find a French curve very hard to use on scale patterns because this curve is designed for a full size pattern. So on this scale pattern, I'm going to use a different tool. This is just a flexible ruler and I'm going to bend it to create what I think is a pleasing curve for this pattern piece. There we go. And I may round this off just a little more right here. There we go, I like that curve better. And I would place my front, or my tape together pattern piece back together, and I wanna make sure that I'm gonna notch this front piece so that I know where these are going to match up. And then the front piece, I would use the same front piece as the actual pattern, and I'm just gonna notch them and overlap when I sew my pattern pieces together. So here's my original front leg and I will still use that and this is where those two are going to match so this whole section here is going to be overlapped by that trim piece. Now one final thing I need to do to this, if you're using the exact same shorts pattern, this Barton shorts pattern, you, that one is designed with a separate waistband. So if you don't want to do the separate waistband, you will need to add the amount of the waistband minus the seam allowance up to the top. So just draw a line. And then of course you'd need to add that same amount onto the front pattern piece, retracing this onto another piece and adding that amount up. But here for the back, we'll just extend those lines. And now I have a waistband casing that I can fold down instead of a separate waistband piece. All right, here are my supplies. I have this decorative pom-pom trim that I'm going to be using. I've got elastic, and then I have two fronts and two backs for my shorts, and they've been cut out mirrored, so my two back pieces are mirror images of each other. Now what you're gonna wanna do to start is take one back and one front and it needs to be the front that when it's when they're both face up it's the front that helps make that U for the crotch so not this front this one is the wrong one it belongs with that leg 
And then what we want to do is we want to match up this inseam here. So we're going to place these right sides together and we're going to go ahead and stitch and finish that seam. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this and finish it on my serger. If you don't own a serger to do that, there are other stitch finishes and um, seam finishes and I've got a link below to a post with how to do those. Okay, y'all, once you've got that sewn with the seam finish, this is what it's going to look like. So if I open this out, we are going to be putting the pom-pom trim around these edges here. So I want to take the trim and I'm going to take some pins and we're going to start about halfway down the front side of the leg because that's going to get overlapped by the back so we don't need to see trim all the way up and it would just add bulk and use more trim. So approximately there, I will pin on a little bit of trim. And then this is actually easier for me to do without pinning. So I'm gonna take it to the machine and show you. But we're gonna continue with, and you want the palms facing in towards the pants and we're gonna stitch that on. All right, so let's put this in the machine. And I find it's easier to move my needle as far to the right as it will go and then stitch slowly. You're trying to land on this braided edge, not on the pom-poms themselves. Just kind of curve it around the edge and continue going slowly. When, when you get closer to the end of this, you're going to want to stop sewing about an inch from the edge on the top here because that's going to be your casing. So you can see your elastic is that wide plus you're going to have some folded under. So I'm actually going to stop right here and that will keep some of the bulk out of your casing. You want to back stitch that last little bit. And then here is what that's going to look like. Here's where I stopped on the back and then on the front. And now what you want to do is flip this whole thing wrong side up and press. You may even want to go press with your iron, but press that pom-pom casing and this top little edge here to the wrong side and then stitch it again. Make sure that the color in your bobbin is going to look good on the front of your fabric because it will show. Okay y'all, once you have that pom-pom trim sewn on and it's been sewn twice so that it doesn't roll out anymore, then you're going to take your two sides and you want to place them so that these U-shaped crotch seams match up. So make sure that you're sewing a back to a back and a front to a front right sides together and take care to match up that seam at the bottom. And then what we want to do is take this on over to the sewing machine or the serger and stitch that seam in a U shape. Okay y'all, once that seam is sewn, this is what it will look like. And then what we want to do is we want to find the back of the shorts, that's the larger side, and open that out like so. And then we're going to fold up the front of the shorts like so. And they're starting to look like shorts. Now, the pattern has some notch markings on it and I really hope you cut them out. If you didn't, you're gonna have to figure out where they were supposed to be. But here's the notch marking on the front 
And here is the same notch marking on the back. And what you want to do is actually overlap those notches, match them up, and that is how much the back shorts will be getting overlapped over the front. So go ahead and pin on the waistline to keep those fabric edges together. Okay? Do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we're going to baste along the top there to hold those together. Now, if your machine doesn't have a basting stitch, just set your machine for the longest stitch length that it will do. All right, once those are basted together, this is what your shorts will look like. And then you have a choice to make. If you like this flyaway side of the leg opening, you just leave this like this. If that is not your preference, what you're gonna to wanna to do is lay this out so that that side is flat and go ahead and pin it. And you're gonna to wanna to do a little stitching right again along the pom-pom edge to keep this from actually flying open. You can also just tack it down here. Usually a tack right there will take care of any opening that might happen. But we're going to leave this pair with the sides open since they're going to be pajamas. And then I am going to work on the waistband casing. So let me get my ironing board out and we'll show you how to make that casing. All right, y'all, I have my ironing board out and I've got my shorts wrong side up on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press a little quarter inch turn to the wrong side all across the top waistband edge here. And then once I've gone around and I've pressed all of that in, then I'm going to turn it down a little, just a teeny bit over one inch, like maybe one and an eighth inches because I'm using one inch wide elastic. So you can just use your elastic as a guide to do this and make sure you're gonna have enough room to stitch on that edge where you're pressing without catching the elastic in it. And if your casing is wanting to unfold itself, you can also add pins here to keep it creased and folded where you're gonna to wanna to stitch. And where it's overlapping over here, that can be a tricky area to do in fact, you may even want to stitch your fabric together right there so that it can't roll or move. At the very least, I am going to pin that part. Just to keep everything there where it's supposed to be so this doesn't move or get caught funny. Okay, now that I've got that all pressed, let's take this over to the machine and we're gonna stitch around the waistband. All right, so I'm gonna set my machine back to a regular stitch and I'm gonna start stitching and I'm gonna make sure that I leave a gap before I get back to where I started stitching. Okay, here's my spot where I started stitching, so I'm gonna stop in just an inch or two here. Let's insert the elastic into this waistband. So, here is my gap in the casing, and I like to use this tool. This is called a bodkin, and I have a link below to where you can get this, but to use it, you clamp it on to the elastic, and you slide this little ring down to keep it tightly clamped on, and then you use that to feed through the waistband. You don't have a bodkin, you can also use a safety pin. Those work fine too. Okay. 
Once you get your elastic pulled back through, take the bodkin off and we're going to overlap just slightly and stitch this on the machine. Take this over to the machine, set your machine for a zigzag stitch. I like to do one about four millimeters wide and about, sorry, and about a two millimeter length. And back stitch that. And then give your shorts a few tugs to distribute that elastic evenly. And then go ahead and stitch this opening on your casing closed. You may have to stretch your elastic while you're doing this to get the fabric to lay flat. And then trim up any remaining threads. Turn these right side out and you are done. Here are my shorts.